Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilots YouTube channel. And we recently had an airplane come into the shop, and as you can see right there on the output of the electric fuel pump underneath that uh, fire sleeve, what's going on? Because we're not getting the right fuel flow readings from the fuel flow transducer on the JPI. Even if we look in closer with this close-up, we still don't see what's going on. So we're going to have to unwrap this, so stand by while we get ready to have some fun. We would like to ask you please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. Now what we're used to seeing is usually when you come out of the electric fuel pump, there's a 45 degree, sometimes even a 90 degree elbow, and then it goes off into a fire sleeved hose, taking it off down to the carbureted pump, and then it went from there it would have a fuel flow transducer and going on. But that's not what we're seeing here. When we look at this little piece of fire sleeve, we don't know what's going on underneath it, so now we're going to go ahead and remove it and take a look at what we find underneath where it connects to the hose that goes down to the, to the other fuel pump. And as you can see here, we had to take the electric fuel pump off the firewall to be able to take it all apart. But there's the electric fuel pump on the bottom right. All the fittings and unions and the transducer that were underneath that little bitty piece of fire sleeve and as you can see from all the bits and pieces here we broke several of the rules that JPI recommends for their installation and any one of them would cause a failure not the fitting one but let's go and take a look at some of the rules that were broken in this installation now JBI does come with a full set of installation manuals. There's also an online support group, so you're really not out on your own when you're installing them. And the shop that I learned how to do maintenance in, if somebody was installing a part and they couldn't read the directions correctly, they were an IDOT because even an idiot can read directions and follow them. What you're going to see in this installation was somebody installed this and didn't follow a single rule and that was why we were having the faulty fuel flow readings. That's all been straightened out, but let's take a look at some of the things that JPI recommends in this. Now these won't be in any particular order, but look at this. When you're securing the transducer, do not place an angled elbow joint immediately prior to the input port of the fuel flow transducer. Well, as you saw in the picture, stand by. Our fuel flow transducer was immediately off of an angle joint, so that violated rule number one fairly quickly. So it is important, and there should also be two inches of straight flow immediately before the transducer import. Now, the output side isn't so important. A uh, two inch flow into a curved piece of tubing, but uh, try to avoid an angle joint, but you wanna have some straight line. That's because you wanna have non-turbulent fuel flow so the transducer reads correctly. There's just a little wheel in there that spins around with the fuel flow, and if you have it right, the wheel will spin correctly. Now when we take a look at the next page, since we have a carbureted engine, but we have a fuel pump fed carbureted engine, and so it says right here, purchase two new hoses, one to connect the engine driven fuel pump to the fuel flow transducer, and the other to connect the fuel flow transducer to the servo throttle body or the carburetor. So the fuel flow transducer goes in right before the carburetor, not right after the fuel pump in the system. So that was kind of strike number two on this. It was up in the wrong part of the system and it had an angle joint where it wasn't supposed to have one on the input and definitely not one on the output. So they were both strikes, but you know, then we'll just go ahead and tip the ball and call it not an out yet. Now the other part of the instruction says, where do you want to have this transducer? And it should be higher or level but then you want to have a loop in there and the loop is to keep air bubbles out but it's also being set up so that you have a nice turbulent flow I'm sorry a non-turbulent flow of fuel down to the carburetor or the servo so having it up a little bit higher and that will trap the air so you're never going to send any down to the carburetor but you know you're not going to be having to worry about too much in your lines because at 26 gallons an hour which is what a six cylinder draws through a fuel flow transducer on takeoff pretty much blows everything out of the line but fuel. Now if you go to JPI Instruments, they have a question. Can you use aluminum fittings when you're setting up the fuel flow? And they say, no, you have to use steel. 
and they say don't use the aluminum or the brass only steel now you can buy them in the other ones the aluminum they make aluminum they make brass and they make steel by the way steel being the most expensive but that's the one they recommend now personally do i think having if you're using an aluminum fitting versus a steel one's going to make an error in reading no but to be legal for long durability of the stc and the uh instrument i would go ahead and use the steel and that's what we use but again you can get all three now the steel ones they look like steel and this is what they look like nice and shiny and pretty sometimes it would be nice if they made them in stainless steel but that's a much heavier much harder type of steel then you also have them in the um i'm sorry in the blue aluminum which is what we're used to seeing the blue aluminum is a lot softer but they have all the standard threads the mpt nipple to the flare nipple and that's fine but i really don't think aluminum is going to make a problem and then you can have the uh, nitrated steel if you like that and that again again is a very expensive option when you get them from aircraft spruce now when they come you get them in a bag now there's a lot of different parts that go into the fuel flow system some parts of it you can use for brass such as like the t's and the unions when you have to tap off of a line and so we buy a lot of them and we keep them in stock because a lot of times when we're working on airplanes you just want to go grab a tea you don't want to have to wait for an order to come in so you can use those and begin to use be sure to use the teflon tape where appropriate in those and then you can also get the mpt and the uh, standard a and 816 flares and again we saw that they're available in three different colors three different styles and we're supposed to be using a steel one and this would be the one that we would be using in here we're not going to be using the stainless steel we're not going to be using a brass which due to aircraft spruce does not carry and we're not going to be using the aluminums which are in blue and then we're going to be hooking it all up with a brown hose the brown hoses are the uh, class d hoses they have stainless steel on the end and they have the uh, teflon fire sleeve and they're pretty much guaranteed that they're on condition from day one so you're never going to have to worry about changing your hoses again you'll only change these hoses down the line should you ever develop a leak and the instructions actually said get two hoses and we find that a six inch and a 12 inch or a 12 inch and an 18 inch are the two combinations that work well for getting a fuel flow transducer in the line between the um, mechanical fuel pump and the carburetor now you can see here after it's all been done the line coming out of the fuel pump is a nice straight brown line now we're not going to have any turbulent flow now your fuel flow transducers it doesn't matter whether you're using the digital pro scan ones here which are the nice red cube ones that you can get for using for the ei instruments or whether you're using the standard flow scans that you use in the jpi stuff there's a lot of interchangeability there so ladies and gentlemen i know that that was a lot of information for you on a improper installation they broke three rules i'm not really worried about the steel fittings but again when you get it all done right you're going to find out that you're going to get a much nicer fuel flow reading and you're not going to be violating any of the rules of the installation manual which voids your stc so now your airplane is not airworthy so make sure you do it all right don't be an idot you can be an idiot but follow the instructions and do what they say thanks for watching and i think you'll have a great day flying your grumman And finally, here's Hopscotch with uh, Sweet Pea observing. He's playing with a little pink feathered twig. Now, the twig is made out of some material like honeysuckle. It just drives them crazy, and they love playing with it. She's resting up. As soon as he finishes, she will have her go. So enjoy them having fun. <laughs>